everybody. I think uh, we have some people joining in now. My name is Ethan. Um, I want to let you know we had a mix up with the meeting IDs, which is probably why it was hard to get maybe into this meeting. Um, if you didn't use the one that was most recently sent, um, it might not let you in. If you have friends that are trying to join this uh, webinar and don't know, uh, please let them know. Um, I'm sorry for that inconvenience. There was an issue with um, Calendly scheduling uh, and it created a meeting invite that went to nowhere. So uh, if you guys could let your friends know, that would be awesome. What are you working on there, Miles? Something in bike cab? Anyway, um, again, my name is Ethan. Um, we're gonna be doing some things here very shortly. We're gonna wait on some more people to join in because of this little issue that we had. We'll jump to uh, some trivia very soon. And then from there, we'll go to um, uh, my presentation and we'll talk about the new product and full reveal. Uh, but yes, please let any of your friends know who are going to join on this uh, webinar to use the most up to date uh, text or email that they got for the meeting invite that has the meeting ID number in it that is um, the actual current. Oh, nice, Miles. That's cool. Very cool. But uh, I hope you guys are all well. We're going to get going here in just a second. We're actually going to wait a couple more minutes. I think it just hit two o'clock now, but uh, I got a couple people loading in, um, and then we'll we'll get to some trivia here shortly. I appreciate you guys showing up on time. Um, again, for the two or three new people that just jumped in, um, there was an issue with the meeting invite ID number. Um, if you could tell any of your friends that we're going to join to use the most recent text message or email that they got with that number in it. Uh, yeah, please use that one. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hey, Paul, good to see you. Yo. Hey, Jeremy, thank you for joining in. And Sean, I think you just popped in too. For those of you who just joined in, uh, my name is Ethan. Um, I'm a product manager here at Box Components. Uh, we will be doing our Box One Stealth Mountain Bike Hub launch uh, in this presentation. Uh, there was an issue with our meeting ID number. If you could please let any of your friends know to use the most recent email or text message that they, uh, that they received to get into this meeting, that would be great. Um, there was a, a mix up there where Calendly uh, mistakenly changed our meeting number. So if you are having in, in any trouble trying to get into the meeting uh, or have friends that are having trouble trying to get into the meeting, that is why. I uh, apologize for that. Sometimes these um, these small details make big issues for us, but uh, I'm glad everybody's here. Thank you for joining in. We've got five seconds on the countdown clock here. Boom. So we're gonna kick this thing off. My name is Ethan. I'm a product manager here at Box Components. I've been here for about five years. Um, one of the big projects that I've been working on is Stealth Hubs. Uh, currently, we have two Stealth Hubs. They are the Expert Series. Those are 
for sale and have been for sale for about eight months. Um, but today we are going to launch the Mountain Bike Boost Hub Set. And I'm going to give you guys um, an insight and some information here. We're actually going to go and do some trivia. I think we have a good amount of people in here. And while some people are joining in, um, we're going to go through some questions. So um, there are prizes for this, cash prizes, well, e-cash, they're gift cards. Um, the rules are the first correct answer received into my chat. So if you know how to get into chat, um, you're already ahead of the game. I'm going to go through it in a second to, to teach you how to get into chat and talk to me directly. Um, if you win one prize, you cannot win again. So it's one prize per player. And then you must be 13 years or older, but anybody uh, in the world can participate in these. You can jump in at any time, um, at any point. So the people that are in here right now, yeah, if you get question one right, that's awesome. Um, and then for the people that join in in maybe a couple minutes, they might have missed some of this, but they could still play as well. Um, so how to use chat. This is very basic. I don't know if all of you are familiar with the Zoom platform, but there are two different types. You're either on your phone or on a laptop or a desktop computer. If you're on your phone and you go to the more button here and you click on that, it will open up this second window where you can choose chat. And then you can send to Ethan, which is me. Um, and that should be set by default. I don't think you guys can really talk to anybody else in there. Um, if you are on a desktop or a laptop or a computer of any kind, um, in the center of your uh, Zoom meeting, there should be a chat window. When you click on that, it will show this white bar on the side. If you guys want to chat right now and say hi to me, you can. Um, and we're going to actually go into some of these questions. So you will have to type into chat your answer to me to win any of these prizes. Uh, we will be giving away three um, $25 gift cards. And we'll be giving away uh, two $50 gift cards. And these are all to boxcomponents.com. Um, so if you want to buy any products from our website, um, you're looking for a discount on something, this is a great way. Um, there's not a ton of you guys in here right now. So for everybody that showed up on time or early, this is an awesome way for you guys to get some cash. Um, I'm just going to give you guys another second here, but yeah, please jump into your chat box and be ready to type these in. Uh, I'm going to go in yeah, just a second here. I got a couple people loading in, but um, Super excited to have all you here today to show you some new product and kind of go through some of this stuff and ask you some dumb questions. And uh, hopefully you guys can get some of them right. Um, for those of you who are just joining in, um, my name is Ethan. I'm a product manager here at Box. We're going through some trivia right now. I kind of went over the rules already. Uh, they are up on the screen. And if you guys have any questions, uh, you can type them into chat too. Uh, I can answer those, but uh, we're going to go to question one right now. These are easy. So for $25, in which decade was mountain biking originally started? Got some answers coming in. And it looks like we have our first correct answer. Mountain biking was initially started in Northern California in the 1970s. This one goes to Sean Tucker. Uh, you won, you got the first answer correct. Um, so Charlie Kelly, Gary Fisher, um, and a bunch of guys in Northern California, Marin County really started mountain biking. They would take old beach cruisers, cut them up and then ride down hills. Um, that's really where it started. Although some of that is debated, uh, but um, Sean Tucker, uh, I will send that to Chloe. You win number one. Let's see if I can actually get that up here. Going on to question two. For $25 again, which type of mountain bike has suspension in the front and rear? Looks like I got a couple quick. You guys are really fast on this. I got like three or four at the same time. Um, 
The answer is drum roll, please. It's a fuller dual suspension bike. The, uh, the winner of this one is Miles Alley. Again, Chloe, that's Miles Alley. Um, there are a bunch of different bikes that use suspension in the front and rear, but realistically the type of bike is a full suspension. Um, this is Vinny T's bike from 2018. Uh, and that will kind of bring us to our next and last $25 question. Kind of going into this. Hope you guys are ready. Yeah, Kevin, you're right. The best ones do have suspension in the front and rear, but that's not the correct answer. All right, for $25, our last uh, $25 gift card, which energy drink brand hosts the largest downhill free ride event in the world? Got some questions coming in, some silly ones. Yeah, you guys are fast. Uh, I think there might be some delay on my side even. Um, you guys know this, it's Red Bull Rampage. This is the biggest one. I'm really excited to see what they're gonna do this year. Again, we have Vinny T riding our DH drive train in uh, 2017, 2018, and 2019 Red Bull Rampage. Um, absolute shredder. We did an interview with him on one of these, uh, these webinars not too long ago. Um, and we have a new winner here. That is Sean Horncheck. Sean, you got that one? Nice, nice. Uh, that's a $25 e-gift card. Um, and that brings us to our last $25 question here. And we're gonna go into this last one. We got, we got, a, we got a good amount of people in here now. Um, again, for those of you who just, who just joined, um, we did have an issue with um, our meeting IP number. If you have any friends or family that are trying to join in on this, um, please tell them to use the most recent email or um, text message that they received from us. Cause that has the, um, the best or the only one that will actually work to get into this meeting. So apologies for that, that mix up there. Uh, we had some scheduling problem. For our first $50 e-gift card. Again, these are autoboxcomponents.com. You will get a direct message that gives you um, the, the code to use this, this money. It's free. Um, it's not a discount code. It's actual money that you can only use at boxcomponents.com. And uh, going into question four. Oh, Jeremy, is that true? They, they announced the cancellation of Rampage today? That's interesting. I'll have to check that out. That's a bummer. Moving into question four. Uh, for $50, who is the president and founder of Box? Got a couple quite got a couple coming in here. It looks like we got some correct answers from people who already run. Let's see. The answer is Toby Henderson, BMX and Mountain Bike Hall of Famer. Uh, this is from an Iron Horse ad from 96. Where's it 97, Toby? I might have got that wrong. Um, the winner of this one is Paul Deber. Paul wins this. It's a $50 e-gift card. Um, and uh, it kind of brings us to our last, our last trivia question. I hope you guys are having fun with these. These are really just a way to kill some time while people join in. Um, I'm kind of extending this a little bit longer than we originally anticipated because of some issues with our, uh, our meeting ID. But that's how some of these digital things go. And for our last question, I hope you guys are ready be there on your chat to type some of these in quick. Um, again, this one's gonna be a box related question. So for $50, which drivetrain did box launch in 2019? I uh, got, got some right answers in there. Let's see here, what is the answer? I don't know. It's prime nine. And if you could see down there, I don't know if you guys can see my little uh, video feed from, from here. You can only see my shared screen. Um, in 2019, we launched Prime 9. That's our large range, low gear count um, drivetrain. We have four levels of that box, one through four. And the correct answer from that went to Glenn Case was the correct, the first one who got the correct answer who did not win before. I did get two answers in there that were, were winners before. So that kind of wraps that up. Um, 
again, I hope you guys had fun with that. That was just a silly way to, to kill some time here while we wait for people to join. And um, you will get a direct message from Chloe. Well, it'll say box. Um, and that will give you the, the code for you to be able to use that money on our website to buy anything you want. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about that, you can give us a call um, or send us an email. Thank you guys for playing our trivia. We're going to jump into this. Um, I'm going to introduce myself again. My name is Ethan. Uh, I've been working at Box for about five years. I created a bunch of products here, worked on a Prime 9 drivetrains. Uh, one of my big projects here is this stuff. Um, you know, we've been working on this for about three years now. Um, as many of you know, this is a long time coming. It is not easy to take product that's made here and make it somewhere else and keep the same quality. So we did so much testing and putting together all of this so that we could provide the same products that we really launched um, or was launched before us. Um, and we'll go into some of that. So realistically, the, the stealth hubs are something that's not entirely new. This is the original prototype. It's like a yearbook photo uh, from 1999. And this was the original concept. Um, all of the current hubs are built off of the original concept of using a one-way roller bearing. These are common in power transmissions and trucks, uh, industrial applications, and our hubs are the only uh, hubs in the industry that use a one-way roller bearing um, even today. Uh, we do have some competitors that run something similar, but it's not a one-way roller bearing. Um, so let's take a look at the past, right? So again, Stealth really was founded by a company here in California called True Precision Components. Um, they released a bunch of hubs since 1999, um, one of them being um, what we basically used as the platform today, which is the S3 hubs. And that is the, um, you know, the revised version from that original concept. Uh, True Precision Components revised it a couple times before, um, you know, we use that architecture, but it does use the same foundation. In 2008, they were raced in the Olympic Games. For that, they released a red hub set. That was their first colored hub set that had the Olympic, um, you know, rings on it. And we purchased them in 2018. Uh, and right before that, uh, not only did we have um, product raced in the Olympics, but Stealth Hubs actually had 15 Olympians and one gold and one silver medal uh, in the 2016 games. Um, again, yeah, we bought, we bought Stealth Hubs from True Precision Components in 2018. And right now is our launch for the Mountain Bike Boost Hub set. I'm gonna go back one. Now, that's kind of the past. Now, looking into the future here, here is our launch video. And, um, you know, you guys saw some teasers on this for the, you know, the past maybe week or so. We've had some, you know, some teasers for this, but I'm going to, I'm going to play this for you all right now. This is the first time anybody's really seeing this video outside of uh, Box Employees. And make sure the sound goes on here. Now, it is very similar to the other video that we had. And oops, we are going to, um, you know, that's the first kind of time that we've seen some of this stuff here. And um, I know, you know, if you guys follow us, it's very similar to all. If you look, drum roll please. So this is our rear boost HG hub. Um, this one is uh, a six bolt. 148 by 12 mil axle that accepts a HG style cassette. Um, and if you look here just on our expert hubs, half of the hub is matte and then the other half is gloss. This is a, a, an aesthetic that we have consistent across the line. 
And then this is our XD version. So again, six bolt, 148 by 12, half mat, half loss. Um, on all of our um, Box One products that are, are newer, we actually incorporate this orange badge. Uh, and if you didn't know for Box, the, the orange is our Box One tier color. So Box One products have uh, an orange on it. And then for the front here, we actually have a, uh, it's a boost front, six bolt again. Uh, now on all of these, if you look, they're all similar, very stealthy. Um, you know, we really like the, the embodiment of black on black. In the future, we will do limited edition colors, um, but we will offer black as our primary color. Um, anytime you see a limited edition color, they will be very rare. We're not gonna run a lot of numbers of them. It'll only be the black. So if you see a color that comes out, maybe one of the following years, we'll do a color for 2021 coming up here. Um, and you'd like that color, buy it because it won't be made again. And um, yeah, that was the, you know, the kind of stealth past and present, you know, now what really makes a stealth hub special? Like why, why is it exciting? Um, they're faster, quieter, more additional, uh, more durable than traditional hub designs, but but why, um, you know, what, what makes this, you know, special? So Stealth Hubs have six unique features. Um, we really put a lot of time and effort towards, you know, kind of making this really work for mountain bike and, and fit the, the ecosystem and environment that they're used in. Now we ride, um, you know, I ride a lot. Uh, most of our employees here ride. So, you know, we're, we're bike people and, you know, there are a couple things that we really wanted to, you know, pursue and show you guys as some of the, the benefits here. Now, in this video, I'll play it a couple times. You can see we have one of our employees here. You know, he just takes a pedal and cranks away. And it doesn't matter what part of your pedal stroke you are in, because there is literally an infinite number of engagement points. Your foot could be at one o'clock, two o'clock anywhere in between and you have the perfect start point. This makes it great for kick pedaling over uh, roots. Um, you know, on the BMX side, getting out of the gate is really important. So again, I'll play this a couple times and you can see um, Tomas just, he clips in, takes a back pedal, doesn't matter where his feet position are, instant power to the ground, no latency. Now that's really special because most hubs don't have that. There are super high engagement hubs out there as probably many of you know, um, but most hubs do not have that high of engagement. Um, and if they do, there, there are some drawbacks to some of the other designs. So like I was talking about the instant power delivery. So this really demonstrates the differences. So here we have a competitor's hub. And if you look at the cassette, you can see it move back and forth and the wheel is not moving. Now, again, wheel not moving. I'm moving the crank arm so slightly, they're slacking the chain a little bit, but there's no play in that cassette. We'll play that again. So you see this one, this, could, this design has 10 degrees of free play and ours um, on paper from that bearing manufacturer, the one-way roller bearing is technically 0.15 degrees before engagement at peak load. So that is um, a really big uh, improvement. And again, you know, if you're going to try to kick pedal over stuff, you're going to have to take up this slack with uh, a competitor's hub versus ours, where it'll be perfect and right there. No, no delay before you transfer power. Another big benefit, and this one's huge for me. Um, our design and the bearing that we use is completely silent. There is no, um, no noise when you are free coasting down a trail um, for the BMX side, going around people in any of the berms and turns. I'm um, being able to do that silently is huge. I'm gonna mute my music here. And um, here we have a competitor's hub. And then, you guys can hear that you know it sounds like a loud hub um and then here's a box hub so 
again, completely silent. Um, when I first rode the, you know, the stealth hubs that we had, it was something to me that was very, it's almost weird at first because it was something, I, you know, I've, I've ridden bikes my entire life. I've worked in bike shops for 15 years. Um, but I never really rode a hub that was, uh, you know, completely silent. I rode a bike that was completely silent. So for that, it was a, you know, first time that I ever really experienced that and was able to hear my tires on the trail. Um, it allowed me to do a couple things. One of them was really, um, I could focus on maybe finding a smoother line because I could actually hear my tires going down the trail rather than, um, you know, the free hub body noise and allow me to pick some smoother lines. Uh, but it also allowed me to like connect with my surroundings and nature a little bit better. I think that was something that was, um, I, I never experienced it before. Uh, so it's really, it's a unique experience. Now, one thing again with the roller bearings is that they are extremely low drag. Now, this is because inside of that bearing mechanism, there are needle rollers and they actually spin as you are coasting. So with pollen spring designs or some of our competitors do that use a one-way bearing, um, they don't, those don't actually rotate. They move out of the way of the mechanism that allows them to roll forward, but they don't rotate. And this contributes to an extremely smooth rolling design. And, you know, I'm not going to make you guys, uh, we will have some spin test videos sometime in the future on our YouTube channel. Um, but here is an example of a, a, it's just rotating very slowly and it wants to maintain um, its momentum. And again, it's very low drag. These this is something that's hard to quantify because there's a lot of um, variables that go into a test like that. Um, so, you know, the weight of the tire, the weight of the rim, all of that contributes to mass that wants to continue to rotate. Um, but we have an extremely low drag, uh, you know, comparatively to some other designs here. For me, like I said, I worked in a bike shop for 15 years. Um, on Instagram, my handle is at handbuiltwheels. I built a ton of wheels still to this day. Um, one of my biggest issues is uh, break, uh, spokes breaking. So in a lot of instances, you see the, the spoke will break in, in really one or two places, where the nipple is at the rim or where the actual J on the spoke attaches to the hub. Now, all stealth hubs have angled flanges. And what that means is that this spoke is directed towards the rim and where it's supposed to land. Most hubs have straight flanges. So if you look here, this is angled. You can see the angle of the flange here actually points the spoke in the correct direction. And on a straight flange, you'll see, and if you go look at your wheels in your garage um, or on your bike, you will see that the spoke actually will bend here so that it can get to the, the correct landing location at the rim. Now, for our mountain bike boost hubs, these angles are tailored towards 27.5 and 29 you know, wheel builds. It'll work for 26 if you wanna use it for that, but again, it's really optimized for those two and it provides a, a real benefit, especially as a wheel builder myself, um, to keep from breaking spokes, both at the J bend, but also at the nipple, because it helps with that axial alignment. Um, and you can see here just the difference in, in degrees between here. Now this is representative. Um, not all hubs have this, um, this feature. I think that I've only seen angled hub flanges on one or two other hubs out there, um, and they are extremely expensive options. And then for our last feature, we use and we partnered with Enduro Cycling Bearings. Uh, Enduro Bearings is a, um, you know, very common bearing manufacturer in the, you know, the cycling space. They make a bunch of industrial bearings as well. Now, they um, work with us and for our mountain bike hubs, we use a full contact seal. And what that is the seals on the bearings actually contact both the inner and outer race. And that helps from mud or dust and dirt from getting into the bearings. 
Um, and it really provides the best sealing possible. And we have that both on the inside seal and the outside seal of the bearing. Um, and they do a great job. We've done a bunch of testing with other bearing manufacturers and um, our, our Box 1 hubs have ABEC 5 LLU seal bearings. Um, and they're packed with a waterproof grease to make that, um, that really the most durable as possible. Now, um, on our BMX side, we have something a little different. Um, for you guys that are really interested in the BMX stuff, we're going to do a launch in a couple weeks here for some of that, where we'll give away some more details. So I don't want to give all of that away. But um, yeah, all of these features are for both the mountain bike and the BMX side. And we really you know, took a lot of time to make sure that these were um, things that really benefited uh, you as a bike rider. Just like Prime 9 is really designed to be durable, simple, um, and performance oriented, Stealth Hubs are too. And those are things that we try to do here at Box and always have that kind of consistency between it. You know, just put it on your bike, go ride it, and, and not have to really worry about the product. Um, because just like you guys, you know, we ride bikes here too. I'm a mechanic, um, but nobody pays me to work on my own bike. So I really don't want to work on my own bike. I just want to go ride. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you can understand that. Now, um, kind of moving forward, if you look inside of the hub, this is a cutaway. So you can really see some of the components here. Um, our one-way bearing is right here, and it's pressed into a steel component that really supports that bearing. This is what creates a very uh, durable and strong mechanism. Um, and then here's the one-way bearing. This actually rolls on this one surface here. And this is where the engagement system is. So if you've never seen inside of a, um, you know, a one-way roller bearing hub, this is what it looks like. There's not too many images out there of something like this. Um, and the precision and hardness and smoothness of this surface is really what gives us very low drag, um, high engagement, and very high durability. Now, Again, all of our hubs use enduro bearings. We use a German-made precision one-way roller bearing for our drive mechanism. Um, and in a lot of our hubs, we use very large diameter bearings. So both on the non-drive side, the drive side, our mid-support bearing, we use big bearings. Um, the bigger the bearing, generally, the higher the load. Um, sometimes they are heavier, but again, going with a very durable, uh, bomb-proof design, this is, this is really our strategy here. Um, this is a boost axle configuration and all of our free hub bodies or drivers for the BMX side, they're all made out of a heat treated hardened stainless steel. So for those of you who maybe have used an aluminum driver in the past with, um, you know, some cassettes, the gear will actually gouge into the splines. That will never be a problem with the Stealth Hub because they're hardened stainless steel. Um, HG and XG free hub bodies available now. Um, we will have another version that will have microspline available in the future. These drivers will be purchased, they're purchasable separate. Um, so if you guys wanted to upgrade or change it out, all you have to do is you just pop the driver out and um, it goes back together. We use aerospace grade materials. Um, again, none of the materials, the heat treat, um, any of that really changed from the, the previous design that was made by True Precision Components. Um, I did my best to, to make sure that we use everything the same and just change what we had to to really keep what was and will be that tried and true, you know, from 1999 revised and, and works design. It just works. Um, and then I got I showed you guys the matte black gloss black combo that we use on some of these, which is um, pretty unique. You don't really see too many of that two texture, one color kind of thing. Um, and I thought that was pretty cool. Specs and pricing. This is one of the biggest benefits. So if you think about um, what some other hubs cost in this area or this spec, this price point, um, you know, there, there are a lot of really nice hubs out there that have awesome specs, but they are way more expensive. Um, so all of the stealth hubs, the expert hubs that we've been selling for eight or nine months, um, the boost hubs that we're showing today, the BMX hubs in the future, they're all going to be $500 for the hub set. That's $150 for the front and $350 for the rear. Now, 
for that money, you get a lot. Uh, you are really getting a, a solid construction uh, with great bearings, great materials, and instant engagement, low drag. You guys know, I've been saying this for, for the past 20 minutes now. So um, again, that's what took a while to really make sure that that quality was good to get the price point down and make them in Taiwan. Um, now, we'll go through some of these, 28 hole and 32 hole available. Um, this is boost and what that means is it's 110 by 15 for the front, um, 190 grams for the front and our matte black gloss black combo. The rear hub, again, 28 and 32 hole design. Uh, both of those are available. Uh, it's a boost configuration again, which if you guys know is 148 by 12 for the rear. Um, we do have HG and XD drivers available now. And the weight for the rear is 475, which is on the heavier side for sure. And we'll kind of come back to that in a little bit. Um, and again, this is a matte black gloss black combo. Now kind of going into the, the price thing a little bit more. So if you look at some of the competition here, um, a lot of the high end, high quality, higher engagement hubs are upwards of 650 to $700. Um, again, you know, we are 100 to $150 to $200 cheaper than a lot of these options. And we provide um, higher engagement and, um, you know, it's very similar quality materials and benefits there. Now, um, going and looking at engagement, if you're on the technical side and you want to see this, on paper, our one-way roller bearing at peak torque has 0.15 degrees of angular delay. That is nearly imperceivable. You can't really tell what that is on the bike. Um, now, if you look at some of these other ones and you know, our, our high, high competition here, um, you know, it's really, again, it's, it's putting us in a level with all of those at a cheaper price. Um, so, you know, just some insight here and giving you guys some details and information um, more on the technical side and kind of looking at what our, our spec and pricing looks, you know, you do get a lot of bang for the buck like I put there. So kind of going back to it. So what's the catch? Um, now the main one I kind of talked about a little bit, they are heavier, or the rear is heavier than, you know, your traditional um, rear mountain bike hub. And that is because of a couple of reasons. You know, the main, the main reason, like I said, is we do have a one-way bearing that's pressed into a steel housing, and that's what creates that rigid, really fast, really solid engagement system. Um, now, the increased weight in your, your hub is not as noticeable as a increase in your, um, say, the, the same increase in weight for your tire because the further you get from the center of rotation, the more that uh, that mass is perceived on the bike. Uh, but it is a weight gain. Um, it did require a few more parts, uh, but again, it's a very durable construction. In 15 years of stealth selling the architecture that we designed ours off of, they only had four um, times that they had to change out that bearing. Um, and that's over a ton of hubs. So um, they are very durable, very strong. And um, because of that, there is a little bit increase in weight. The other one is if you are a really, you know, avid mountain biker and you know different suspension designs, there are, um, there's pedal kickback. And that's basically when you sit on the bike and the rear swing arm goes up, your, um, your chain actually and your derailleur actually swings a little bit. And that's because of the, the direction that the axle moves in as you go through the stroke. Now, for some bikes with really advanced suspension kinematics and design, uh, they're not as, uh, they don't have as much chain growth. So this isn't as much of a, maybe even a, a catch here. But uh, for some suspension systems that have larger chain growth with any high engagement hub, whether it's ours or you know anything below five degrees, any of that suspension, um, you know, travel will get translated to the pedals, and it's called pedal kickback because your pedals will actually pull back 
when you go through those big hits, that really big chunky stuff, because there's no in the freewheel mechanism. Now, um, again, it's not as noticeable on some more advanced suspension systems, but um, yeah, I don't know what you guys um, know about that or can even perceive that. It is on all bikes, but more will be, you know, translated through some of that. And um, at the end of the day, those small drawbacks are, are not as big as some of the other benefits that we have here for some of this stuff. Um, and Miles actually brings up a pretty good point here. The faster you ride, the less pedal kickback you get um, because the free wheel is moving faster than the chain growth. Um, if you guys have uh, any questions or comments you want to put into chat, you know, I can answer them now. That's why we love doing these, uh, these webinars. Um, I've been doing these webinars here at Box for, I don't know, the last five months or so. And we've done, um, we've done a bunch of, you know, drivetrain educational stuff. Uh, I've taken apart various things on, on live webcam and you guys get to see me get real frustrated or not real frustrated. Um, but uh, I'm getting some good questions here. Um, so how would we, these work on an e-bike? Um, they actually work perfect on an e-bike. Um, we have tons of e-bike testing and we actually just released e-bike uh, spec prime nine drivetrains. So if you go to our website and check that out. Now, again, because it it's really overbuilt for a regular trail bike or enduro riding application, um, they work really well for, for e-bikes. Uh, additionally, on some e-bikes, you have, um, we'll call it a front freewheel, but where the motor system is, there is uh, a lag or, or angular delay in engagement there. So if you do have one that takes, you know, a couple of degrees to engage in the front and then a couple of degrees to engage in the back, the upgrading of the rear hub to something like Stealth would be a huge benefit um, because it's basically having that, that amount. Um, let's see here. Uh, Sean's asking a great question. Um, what's the difference between a bearing that's in an Onyx hub and the Sprag clutch bearing that's in an, um, or the Sprag clutch bearing that's in an Onyx hub and a roller clutch bearing that's in uh, a, a box stealth hub? So the roller clutch bearing, like I said before, actually has needles that, um, that rotate freely. A Sprag clutch bearing has fingers that, uh, that flip back and forth. They are very similar designs. And actually, Onyx reversed engineered our hub from Stealth before we purchased it. Um, and that's how, kind of where they got the design. So if you were to cut apart a, a, an Onyx hub and you look at it, it looks very, very similar to this. Um, one of the biggest differences is the price. You know, our hubs are a lot cheaper, um, use the same technology, have lower drag, um, and very, very similar specs. Um, we don't have a ton of colors. Uh, that's, you know, one thing that we, you know, we're not really pursuing that. They make some really awesome products, but to be able to get something that's, you know, bomb proof, durable, easy to put on your bike. Um, that's why we created self. It's durable and simple. Um, Marcelo is asking a great question. Is it requiring a special tool for removal um, of the, in, the internal mechanism? So all of these use standard bearing sizes. Um, we will sell, and again, we, we partnered with Enduro. You can see there's an Enduro bearing press tool there. Um, we will have bearing kits available for these. There's no special tools really required for the hub shell bearings. So that would be in this picture. If you look at any of these, these bearings here, um, you know, they pop out very easily. The, um, the drive mechanism is easy to service. Uh, we have some videos on that. The, again, in four years, or I'm sorry, in 15 years of them selling this architecture, they only had to replace four of those mechanisms. Um, and they were, you know, pretty unique cases, but um, it's really easy to service. Um, all you really need is some WD-40 to clear out any of the issue or any, any debris that gets in there. Uh, compressed air helps blow it out as well. And then they use a automatic transmission fluid, just a teeny bit of it. And that's what lubricates all of those rollers and makes it really low drag. So great, great question, Marcelo. Um, let's see here. Just going through some of these questions. 
Um, Carlos is asking when they will be available. We will be taking reservations on our website. Uh, we have seen some delays, mostly due to COVID. Um, unfortunately, that's just how a lot of this, um, you know, this stuff has been going. Uh, I believe uh, sometime in November, we will have these shipping from here. Um, and that should be, you know, uh, again, if you, t if you keep up to date and are on our newsletter, you'll see, you'll get updates for that. So please join our newsletter, uh, be a part of these webinars that we do every other week for, um, for mountain bike stuff. And then every other week, the other weeks we do uh, BMX stuff too. So there will be regular updates in there. Um, and let's see here, if we have anything here. Um, yeah, I don't really have too many other questions here. Um, hubs only or complete wheel sets? Uh, they will be hubs only. We are working with a couple brands to have um, uh, wheels that you could purchase from them. Uh, again, I'm an independent wheel builder. I've been doing that for about 15 years. We have a lot of independent wheel builders that we're, uh, we're working with that you can reach out to, as well as some distributors and some brands that will offer them. So. Um, you'll see around that same time we'll have a couple we'll have a couple options there. Um, now, again, if you guys have any questions, you want to type them in the chat. I'm going through most of these. Um, Sean's asking about SKF matrix bearing uh, MTRX. Uh, they are very good bearings, but they're very expensive. Uh, if you look at a lot of industrial applications, they use. Um, you know, maybe uh, not a Swiss bearing. Swiss bearings are very expensive, um, but the tolerance in the bearing is usually determined by an ABEC number. Some companies use different uh, coatings or, you know, you'll see a ceramic bearing. Now, ceramic bearings out of the box when they're brand new spin extremely well, um, but as the material hardness, um, you know, degrades or chips over time, they do have some issues. And I've seen that with a couple of our competitors um, where maybe it's not a true, you know, it's not a ceramic material. It's really ceramic coated. Um, and like I said, out of the box brand new, they work great. Uh, but over time, they don't work as great as what's inside of um, these ABEC 5 Enduro bearings. Those are solid. Um, there will be upgrade kits available for these. Um, and then there will be some for our BMX hubs. We'll have some higher end bearings. Um, I don't know so much about that one, Sean, though. I'll have to look into it. So thank you for the tip. Um, I don't know of all of the, you know, a lot of these companies have some really unique um, application specific bearings that they, they put out and, you know, we use, um, we use what we've tested. We've done so much testing with these and uh, this is something that keeps the price in a good range and is the best, you know, possible option out there for this. But let's see. Uh, Tim, that's a great question. Uh, we will have a bunch of other variants. So we'll have a 157, which is Super Boost Plus. Um, we'll have 20 mil fronts. We'll have some DH rears as well as, um, you know, available. And then um, I believe in 2021, we'll also see some gravel variants. If any of you guys are into that kind of stuff, um, this is something that's super cool for, for a bike like that. So those would be 12 mil front and um, 12 142 rear. And uh, we'll have uh, XDR and 11 speed HG road free hub bodies, which are different than uh, the mountain bike versions. We have some of that information available on our website and the differences between them. And um, yeah, I think right now that's about all the questions that I have uh, or I've gotten. Uh, if you guys have any comments, um, any questions for me, my name is Ethan again, uh, Ethan at box components. Um, you can send me an email and it's, um, you yeah, know, I'll get back to you guys soon. Um, let's see if there's, uh, if there's anything else you guys want to know. I think that's pretty much it. We had, um, you know, scheduled this to go to about 2:45. Um, I know there were some initial issues with getting into the, um, the meeting. So thank you guys for everybody that figured out how to get in here. Um, I really do think that there's a, um, um, you know, some value in doing these webinars and we can kind of talk about these things. Um, let's see. Kevin, uh, steady spin. Uh, I will, yeah, definitely be building some stealth wheels for, for customers. Um, you know, I try to direct 
all of the, the box or stealth stuff through our through our other channels. Um, you know, we build a lot of wheels in house. They're mostly for testing um, and for our display bikes and that kind of stuff. And those are the ones that I build. Or um, Sean Bader is one of our wheel builders that we have that do does some in house wheel builds for us on the BMX side. He's solid, solid guy. So um, yeah. About it. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, I think we reached out to everybody that had won in our original trivia. Um, if you guys liked that, you know, please come back to these. Maybe we'll do some more. Uh, it's kind of like a game show. I'm not really a game show host. I don't really like doing that stuff. But um, if you guys had fun, maybe we'll do it again. And um, you know, thank you for for joining us. I, I really appreciate it. Go to our website and um, yeah. Um, Go to our website and check it out. I will have the landing page up. I think should be up really soon. Maybe um, maybe it's up now already. Uh, stealthhubs.com. Uh, there's a lot of information. A lot of what was in this presentation today uh, will be up there as well. And um, yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Really, really appreciate it. I'm super excited about this and I hope you guys are too. So um, again, if you guys have any questions after we're done, send me an email, ethan at boxcomponents.com. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Hope you guys go out and get a ride today. It's supposed to be 105 degrees on Sunday here. So um, try to avoid some of that. But uh, thank you guys. Have a good day. We'll see you soon.